this red section in here is basically what's live. Those terminals there are live. So what I want to do is grab my cutout shroud and just plug it in there. <laughs> morning welcome back to the channel so today we're in my hometown which is a nice nice change and I've got a very interesting job I've been tasked with uh, moving a meter yeah moving a meter from inside a house to outside a house I'll explain why and all that it's obviously going to involve pulling the fuses as well and all that naughty stuff um, so yeah it's going to be an interesting one let's run the intro and get into this video This is my hole for the day. You can see there's a little torpedo there joining this supply. And the reason they've done that is because they cut off the supply to this building and then sent it through into here to this little head. You can see the old supply there, been cut, jointed on there. The reason they've done that is because this whole building's coming down and that one, and that's to make way for flats that go in there. They're also building two houses up there, up the way. Yeah, the reason I'm here today is because the meter from that property and the isolator need to be moved into this cupboard. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mike, you're an electrician. You can't do that, and I can't normally. Normally, it's between the energy supplier and the DNO. However, on this project, when the client requested the move, the DNO and the energy company didn't want to do it. They refused, and in the end, man he managed to get permission, written permission, which I'll see if I can show you. I think I should, maybe I can't show you, actually. But yeah, we got written permission to move the meter, cut the seals here, fit the meter, <laughs> and fit the isolator and um, yeah afterwards we just got a request to get it real resealed up afterwards so yeah it's a bit of a weird one um, but I'm up for it I'll, I'll do it and uh, I'll bring you guys along for the journey we've also got a fit in this top corner a little fuse board and some RCD sockets just so the builders have got some power it needs a TT earth but I'm probably gonna jump on a second video today and uh, do like a separate video on that because I haven't done anything on TT Earthing apart from when I tested one with, with Paul Meenan at a railway station. I'll link that video below. Let's go inside and let's have a look at the existing isolated setup. So this is the existing property and the Unstead's cupboard. And this is our main sort of setup. Beauty look. Old MEM. And yeah, we've got our, I think this is like a wireless receiver for the smart meter, or it is the smart meter itself, I'm not really sure. You've got the meter there, and then you've just got a, a main switch as well at the back. And then yeah, the tail's in and out. So this is my incoming, other side's my outgoing, goes through the isolator, and then you've got the old rope tails into the board. So I'm basically gonna be taking this, this, and the switch, and uh, yeah, fitting it in that little cupboard. So this is the board I'm going to be fitting. It's an Aleutian, which um, I've never fit before. It seems okay. And then yeah, four four sockets, like I mentioned. So we're going to split them across two circuits, I believe. We're then going to fully load the board. Or are these just blanks? Blanks, blanks, blanks. Yeah, so we've just got two breakers then. Blanks, just MCBs, because we've got RCD sockets, integrated RCD sockets. A bit of Copex to come out of the board with. And then, yeah, we've got main switch SPD, tails retention, labels and what have you. And then I believe I'm just gonna go in this left-hand side with the tails gland. Yeah, it's gonna get mounted in that top right-hand side there. Once that's all up and the sockets are done, because that's the boring bit, basically, we'll then get to chopping the meter out and fitting all that.
I've gone on about these on loads of previous videos. This is a whisker tails gland, and it's actually got what they call a windsor in the middle of it as well. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna hug our live and neutral tails, as well as our earth really nicely. and just compress really well around them and, and fix them in. This cord has got a, a sort of tails retention anyway. I always use these glands and I swear by them to be honest. So yeah, it's called the Whisker Sprint Plus. And yeah, shout out to Whisker for another great idea. Another essential. Speaking of essentials, these. So, so easy to chew up glands basically, especially like plastic glands or even like metal glands. They don't make them like they used to. The metal they use is terrible. I always harp on about these smooth jawed Nipex pliers. I've got the VDE ones, they come in all sorts of handle types the dipped and the normals. I'll turn that off because it not matter. Yeah, I swear by them. Um, this is a 250 size, they come smaller as well. It goes up to like a 50. 52 mil opening as well, so it's like a set of spanners in your bag. That's that. I'm gonna knock out these two. Okay, Pex. Okay, get those bits out. Yeah, I think we're I think we're ready to go. Live through, so it's going on the right. You want it on the inside, basically. Like so, and then finally, our earth to go through that middle terminal, middle terminal, that middle hole, which is always quite tight. Now we want to start forming our bends. I'm going to do live first. Just a bit about there. It's looking pretty good. Cut about there. So the reason why you want to do your bends first, like this, is because. I'll show you, I'll show you on this end down here actually. If you bend this like that, and then we'll strip this back. You can see how the copper's sort of staggered from one end to the other. And that basically means that you know it's not gonna be the best connection. So if you bend it beforehand like we have here, you can then strip the right length and trim it off like that as if you strip it get it into the board and then bend it um it's going to change what you've stripped basically so yeah always bend first do both bends if need be because again just by doing that second bend there you can see it's not um it's not flush anymore and again if i do another bend it's not flush anymore yeah obviously these are flexi tails are great but they will they will change the more you bend them and also if you start taking bends out Again, you can see what I've done there just by taking those bends out has again manipulated the copper inside. 
So yeah, always do your bending first, get it formed exactly how you want it, and then strip, and it shouldn't move basically. It's gonna give you a, a decent connection in the cage terminal for the main switch. start forming this one. So this one's going to want to be a bit tighter than the other one. There we go, pretty happy with that. Obviously this is just all temps anyway. So I'm not going to lose any sleep over it again. Get that tightened up. We're going to talk it all up afterwards. But we'll get it sort of arm tight and then we're just going to fire this back as well. Clamp. You can very easily overdo these clamps. I think that's why it's got the torque rating on it. Lovely. And then tighten this compression gland up. Right, so a little tip with um, the tip of these is when you're um, when you're working with conduit and, and copex and stuff like that singles anything this works for really but it's great for TNE is you just fold it over really squeeze it and it's just going to give it a nice round edge to bounce around the inside of the copex and make its way through quite easily this is a really short bit but it does help you've got to commit though because when you pull it back it's a bit like a like a fish hook and it'll sort of jag in the way you can get around that is by taping that off and creating a slope on the back end of it as well with tape and then um, yeah you can pull it out as well I'm pretty confident this time so let's pop it in and see how we go the other tip with Copex is keep it as straight as, as possible there we go it's more than enough there So I've, um, I've come to a bit of a dead end. I can go inside now and I'm gonna do that. But I just wanted to talk briefly about yeah where I'm at. So I had a bit of a thought about these RCD sockets and what I was doing here. I'll be honest with you, I've never put in a TT rod um, before. I've, never, I've worked on TT systems, I've tested them, but I've never fitted a, a TT system myself. And I was just always aware that you need upfront RCD protection. Uh, for faults obviously you want it for additional as well but you need it up front and what I've been provided with is these two MCBs and some RCD sockets but what I actually need is two RCBOs and just some normal sockets I don't need an upfront uh, time delayed RCD or anything like that because I've got a compression gland holding the tails and I've also got another another clamp here above the above the main switch and what that means is basically these cables are going to be really hard to be yanked out and uh, therefore the probability of a fault is extremely low and then you can emit the uh, the upfront time delayed RCD that's yeah as far as I know it like I say I've tested a lot of these systems I've never installed one myself so yeah I'm now waiting for two RCBOs to be dropped off and four normal sockets so I can't get any further on with this board and this setup but I am going to go inside and um, yeah start stripping that meter out I'm going to get more into the regs and what I think I know about TT systems in a separate video that will get linked below I thought I'd talk about it briefly in this video so you know why um, yeah, why I've stopped. Let's head inside and get this, this meter stripped out. 
Yo, I need to quickly talk to you about today's video sponsor, Tado. So if you don't know who Tado are, they're a manufacturer of smart heat and thermostats and accessories to efficiently, smartly, and economically heat your home. They don't want me to tell you about their products though, even though they're sick. They want me to tell you about their new portal, Tado for Professionals. So this is a dedicated app for trade installers like me and you, and it takes a couple of minutes to sign up and gives you access to loads of cool features, which will make installing their products easier but it will also reward you for doing so so the key features for me are the training on the app it's going to train you up on the products inform you on the products so not only you can know what you're doing but you can also pitch the products to your customers hopefully win those jobs as well over maybe the more unorganized or ill-informed sort of tradesmen um, you're also going to have access to all of the manuals spec sheets of the products which is cool there's an extended five-year warranty through the portal too so you can offer that to your customers and also just have your own peace of mind the stuff you're installing has got an extended five-year warranty but the two main features for me are the dedicated trade discounts you're literally going to get these products at a exclusive discount for you know Tado for professionals members for people signed up so you can either pocket that yourself offer it to your customer who cares but yeah a discount's a discount at the end of the day and there's also a reward system so the more Tado products that you install there's a reward system that's going to look after you there so so yeah, if you're you know informed, pitching these on your installs, recommending this product, you're going to get them cheaper than anyone else. You're going to be well informed doing so, and you're going to get rewarded for doing it. So to me, it sounds like a no brainer. I don't do too much domestic work these days. I also don't have my own company, but if I did, I know I'd be jumping straight onto this app and utilizing it on my domestic installs. Thanks to Tado for sponsoring today's video. Uh, it it makes content like this possible sponsors of the channel so i'm really appreciative of them but yeah enough waffling let's get back to the content all right i'm in my little cupboard so this is the main setup that i showed you before and uh, briefly spoke through spoke spoke about so yeah meter main switch or, or isolator sorry and then this is something to do with the smart meter so first what i want to do is cut all these seals like i say have permission to do so. I'm going to be reusing this main switch as well to provide a form of isolation and then yeah let's let's work our way back. So obviously it's all dead because this is my incomer here and there's our incoming cable down here on the floor. So we know for sure it's um it's definitely dead. Let's get this off. Look at those old aluminum Aluminum, aluminium conductors, although I believe they're not actually. A lot of people get this wrong. No, it's just tinned copper, I believe is the actual correct terminology. You can see this sort of copper in there. Um, and then this is just coated in a, in a material, I guess. I don't know why. I'm sure someone in the comments will know. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if you chop it down get into the middle of it all or scratch it off get down to the bare mineral yeah there's definitely copper copper underneath um, yeah dusty old cables covered in rope sort of insulation um, there's a neutral as well it's actually got hot and oxidized I think I don't know what's happened there it's a bit suspect anyway um i was going to keep all this set up but to be honest with you i'm going to redo it all at the other end so i might reuse these little tails here but i've got to redo the tails into the actual meter anyway this is the most um unorthodox way to use an allen key. Um, but I'm not going back to the van. There we go. Lovely. Fixing on this, surely. Yeah, there is. A little head 
in a fix in. Should be a third, yeah. Don't ask me, don't ask me how I know that. There we go. So that is all ready to go. We're gonna get out of this cupboard in a minute, but I just wanted to quickly say um, I do not condone whatsoever tampering with meters, with uh, main switches or mains or fuses or anything like that. Like I said, I've got written permission. Messing with this stuff is illegal if you don't have permission or if you don't work for the DNA or someone like that. None of this is instructional. It's purely for, <laughs> for entertainment purposes. Let's go, uh, let's go get this rigged up at the other end. So I think that's where we want to be. So I would oh, say about there. Let's see how good that is. That's it, that's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. Let's get it nice and level. Also, that could do with a bit more of a tweak. Fitted. Again, we've got it sort of preformed. Look at that, I'm happy with it. Let's ship it about there. finger tight at these I am gonna get a proper tool out of that in a minute. I've got Boddington's cooker knob they call it Allen key which is perfect for these um, somewhere. If not I should have the P handles somewhere too. Thank you. 
these can then just sweep in, I guess. I don't know. Uh, no, I'm trying to I'm trying to go back and think about every single main head I've ever seen and how they do the tails. <laughs> oh spiddler. He's just moved into his new his new place. He's a bit annoyed because there's a bit of work going on, but you know, you have to make sacrifices when you're moving about, but he's quite happy with it. He's got um massive space upgrade. He was in a in a gas cupboard, now he's thought I'm gonna go to the electric cupboard to get a bit more room for myself. He's obviously doing very well in today's today's real estate market, property market, he's he's doing very well for himself. I think I'm just gonna swoop him like that. I don't know. I'm gonna get hammered on eyeball and meter boys. <laughs> Basically. But I think I'm gonna do something like that. But we shall see what's going on. That's all done. I'm going to go find the white tool flat, get that tightened up. That can all get done. Can't put those away yet. I think I'm just going to, we're going to stop for lunch. Find out where Stowey is. Um, finish off a few bits and catch up with you guys when we're doing the, the deed, the dirty deed. So I'm just getting gloved up. Got a three piece glove set. This is all stuff by Katu or Katu. It's all the same company as Boddington's basically. So it's all under the same sort of umbrella. These are just some under gloves. So these are good to moisture, moisture, to wick moisture basically. Especially if you get sweaty hands in gloves. I don't normally, but in these rubbers I do. I think it's probably more to do with the, the live work than anything else but yeah they make them fit better they they wick the moisture i got recommended them by nine plus installations on a youtube video they're very common anyway and then we have the rubbers so these are class zero i don't think these are any good nowadays class zero i might be wrong um, but these again from katu the marigolds the rubbers make you look like you're a simpson which is quite funny um what's cool is they've got this sort of data print on them with all the information about them and there's also a QR code so if you scan that QR code it will actually take you to the documentation for the gloves so the certificate for them and also if you get them if you get them retested through Boddington's and Katu, the updated uh, certification if they've been retested will be on there as well so that's quite cool and then finally we've got the over gloves so these are from Katu. Um, these are just leather overs basically. I don't think they actually hold an arc rating. Some people think they do. I don't think they do. They are flame resistant and impact resistant, but they don't actually have like a cow rating, which is how arc flash is quantified in like energy. And then you have to pick the right cow rating for the, the arc potential basically. These are just gonna stop any of the sharp stuff or the tools I'm using from damaging the actual rubber gloves, which obviously you don't wanna have a hole in your rubber gloves. So all the seals are cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the fuse out of here and I'm gonna fit this. So this is an insulated cutout shroud. We sell them on loadout and this is just gonna bung the sort of live terminal basically and uh, cover all of the live parts and then yeah, connect into the terminals using what I needed earlier, the three millimeter <laughs> T-bar Allen key. Let's get some glasses on. It's very dramatic, but um, yeah, we have to follow the rules, so to speak. Gonna grab hold of the fuse, nice and tight, give it a wiggle up and down, and then pull out. It's as simple as that, that is the fuse pulled. And then this red section in here is basically what's live. Those terminals, they're alive. So what I wanna do is grab my cutout shroud, and just plug it in there. That covers all of the holes, all of the nastiness, and then I can work in these top terminals here. No drama. I've got these two terminals here, which I need to unscrew so I can get my cables in. But at the very top, you can see there's these little sort of holes here. So what I need to do is I need to choose a side. I think I'm gonna go this side. I need to pull that, push that in, and that's gonna allow me to pull this little cap out. That can go in there. And then we can start getting our live in. Loop into there like so. 
go. It's way too much, I'm gonna trim it down. I think that'll be sweet. So now I just wanna then undo this. That's in the first half yet. And then I'm gonna loosen the second one and this should fall down further. So what's quite cool about this particular hex key as well is it actually flexes when these are tight enough. I don't know how they do it, a special part of the manufacturing in the in the tip of this, in, in, in the barrel, where it actually flexes. It really exaggerates, so you can see the the handle's turning but the end's not. And that flexes to, to say that you're sort of at the right torque. To the neutral. These ones haven't got the little things, but they're easy enough to get out anyway. There we go. And then I just want to pop this in in the same sort of sort of fashion. Whilst hitting the camera. <laughs> Again, three mil hex key. Go through the first one. There we go. Right. So now I can put the fuse back in, my isolator's off, so let's do that. Pull out my insulated shroud. Get my fuse. That can go back in. The meter's kicked into life. Everything's tight, we're happy. This isolator's gonna remain off because I need to get my earth in. Now, that is actually gonna be a different video. I'm gonna do the TT rod, drive it in, connect it up, test it and everything like in a separate video. Um, when it does come out, I'll try and link it below, but I think this video is gonna come out first. And that is it for this one. Hopefully you found it enjoyable. Obviously, I just wanna stress again, you are not allowed to mess with meters or mains or fuses or anything like that. We have the permission of the energy company and the DNO to do this. We are working, um, as a as our own entity as a private company um, with their permission to do this so yeah don't replicate any of this do not try it at home nothing like that i do not condemn that this is not a how to either but you know me i enjoy making electrical content and this is a cool video that i could take you guys along for the ride for as always thanks for watching make sure you subscribe for all sorts of videos like this any of the tools you see me using talking about check out loadout that's my tool shop the link for that will be below and i'll catch you guys on the next one